call to order the Middlesex County Utility Authority Commissioner's meeting of Thursday, July 27th, in the year 2017. Would you rise and join with me in a salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a public hearing. Judy, would you call the roll for attendance? <coughs> Chairman Light? Here. Vice Chairman Wiley? Here. Commissioners Tomberry? Here. Cruz? Here. Deal? Here. Jacobs? Here. Juliana? Here. Murray? Here. This meeting is being held in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Law. Compliance with the law has been met by providing notice of the meeting to the counties of Middlesex, Union, and Somerset, and also to the news media, which includes the Courier News, the Star Ledger, and the Home News Tribune. First item that we have on the agenda for uh, this morning is the public hearing. Morning, this is afternoon, right? <laughs> <laughs> it feels, oh. like it's, feels like it's late in the You don't know what time I got up, so it makes a difference. <laughs> it's the uh, public hearing for uh, the payment of the uh, so wastewater connection fee and temporary discharge application. So I will turn it over to you. Leslie, you're going to take care of that first. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, tonight, or this afternoon, is the public hearing regarding the 2017 wastewater connection fee and temporary discharge application fee. Since this is a public hearing, we should take the uh, roll call once again for the record because a transcript will be provided uh, as a result of this hearing. So if we can take the roll call one more time. Chairman Light? Here. Vice Chairman Wiley? Here. Commissioners Conbury? Still here. Cruz? Here. Deal? Here. Jacobs? Here. Giuliano? Here. Murray? Here. Okay, thank you. Tonight, or this afternoon again, we are having a public hearing regarding the 2017 wastewater connection fee and temporary discharge as set forth in a resolution that will be presented today. Uh, we have marked it as Exhibit A1, and A1 is a uh, affidavit of publication regarding the publication of notice of the public hearing, and we have A2, which is the 2017 connection fee calculation for the Middlesex County Utilities Authority for the period July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2018. This is the same fee as the temporary discharge. I'd like to have both A1 and A2 uh, marked for purposes of the uh, hearing this evening by the court reporter. You can do that. We will have uh, two witnesses to provide testimony this evening regarding the uh, action that is being proposed. The first witness will be Karen Sissick. What is your position with the authority? I'm the treasurer and comptroller. And I'd like to show you what has been marked as A2. Can you pick A2? And this is the connection fee and temporary discharge calculation, correct? Yes. And would you please describe how you determined the calculation? The 2017 connection fee is adopted in accordance with New Jersey Statute 4014B-22, which authorizes the collection of rent, rates, fees, and other charges for the direct and indirect connections to the sewerage system. The statute also states that there will be a separate charge for the nature of the connection fee or tapping fee 
which may be imposed on the owner or impact any new property connecting to the system. The fees are calculated as of July 1 of each year based on the expenditures from previous fiscal years. We total all the debt service paid in the immediate, excuse me, the immediately preceding fiscal year. We add to that the number of capital expenditure items paid for through the budget, not paid for by bond proceeds or reimbursements by third parties. It, it also includes any deposits made into the reserve for new construction and replacement of the plant. Deducted from that subtotal are any subsidy grants, contributions, and interest earned in any of these construction funds which pertain to those bond issues or any bond reserve funds which draw interest. The resulting total is added to an accumulation of prior debt service paid since 1977. This amount is divided by the total number of gallons of sewerage received in the immediately preceding fiscal year. The amount of the connection fee for 2017, using all of these calculations from the year 2016, is 20,977.65 per million gallons. This number is also used as the temporary discharge fee. And for the record, did you prepare A2? I did. Thank you. Are there any questions of the board of Ms. Sizek with respect to the testimony that she has provided with respect to the fee? Okay. Um, the public is also permitted to ask the witness any questions, so of course examine the witness. Is there anyone from the public that wish to uh, raise a question? Seeing none, I would like to call the second witness. Thank you, Ms. Sizek. The second witness for this evening is Kevin Ayala. And if he can be sworn in. I do. Mr. Ayala, what is your position with the authority? I'm the administrator for environmental quality. And will you please give us a description of the temporary discharge rate? Yes, I will. The authority has established a program to grant approvals for the discharges generated from the remediation of contaminated sites within its service areas, such as groundwater cleanup projects. This program allows for these types of discharges through the issuance of temporary discharge approvals. The temporary discharge approvals set forth the discharge limitations, which must be complied with prior to discharge entering the wastewater collection system. The discharge limitations include specific quantity and quality parameters, which shall be complied with, and other provisions that are protective of the authority's personnel, trunk system, central treatment plant, and the environment. As part of these temporary discharge approvals, the connection fee has been established on a per million gallon basis for these types of discharges to the authority. The authority's treatment plant and trunk sewer were designed based on the projected domestic and industrial commercial wastewater flows it would receive over a 20 year period. The discharges generated from re remediation sites were not and are not required to be included in these projections. Therefore, the connection fee established for these remediation site discharges is to account for the use of the authority's infrastructure that has been constructed for the projected domestic and industrial commercial wastewater flows. Thank you, Mr. Aiello. Are there any questions of the board of Mr. Aiello? Apparently not. Okay, and um, now opening it up to the public, are there any questions from the public of Mr. Aiello? Seeing none. appear again. Seeing that, we can move on. Okay. At this point, I'd like to have exhibits A1 and A2 entered into evidence for the record. A1 again being the affidavit of publication, and A2 being the 2017 connection fee calculation. So moved. Second. John Wiley. I'll second it. You got them? Yeah. Okay. You got them. Okay. Uh, roll call. Chairman Light? Yes. Vice Chairman Wiley? Yes. Commissioners Convery? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Steele? Yes. Jacobs? Yes. Juliano? Yes. Murray? Aye. Okay. And that we're at the point we can have a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Okay, go ahead. Right. Right. Second. 
Mr. Murray and Mr. Riley. <coughs> okay. All those in, oh, I guess we should call the roll. Roll call vote. Chairman Light? Yes. Vice Chairman Wiley? Yes. Commissioners Convery? Yes. Crew Yes. Yes. Steele? Yes. Jacobs? Yes. Giuliano? Yes. Murray? Aye. And that concludes the public hearing, Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to the court reporter. We appreciate it. You did a fantastic job. Give <laughs> <laughs> you a minute to get situated. All right. We have nine resolutions. The first resolution is the one that we just did, which is the resolution a 8 r for the adoption of the 2017 wastewater connection fee and temporary discharge application fee. And we have uh, eight other resolutions uh, in addition to that first resolution we just completed. So Chris, would you give us kind of like an agenda description of uh, what those other eight resolutions are? Yes, uh, resolution number uh, two is a contract award for solids equipment warranty service and parts. This is for our uh, sludge dewatering belt filter presses. Um, there was uh, one bid received from a company called Charter Machine Company for these services. And the uh, this is a two-year contract. Their low bid amount was $359,800 for a two-year period. And we are looking to make an award for year one in the amount of $171,000. Um, and that concludes resolution two. Resolution number three is a contract award for removal and transport of IV-27. IV, this, this waste is um, a material that comes from our screenings here at the wastewater treatment plant grid and our pumping stations. And um, this is for the removal and, and transport of that material. Um, the, the tipping fees are paid directly by the MCUA. Uh, this also uh, was, was, was bid. There was only uh, one bid received from Waste Management of New Jersey, and it's also a two-year contract. The bid amount for the two-year period is $343,700, and we're looking to award year one for the amount of $171,850 uh, at this time. Uh, resolution number four is a contract award for professional services during construction uh, of, of contract uh, South Bay Interceptor Rehabilitation Phase 2. Uh, we, we went through the fair and open process of the uh, uh, Pay to Play Act. Um, we received qualifications. Um, as a result of those qualifications, we, uh, we selected uh, R3M and requested a proposal and received the proposal for this work in the amount of $185,530, and we're looking for uh, R3M to uh, perform this work. This matter was uh, uh, discussed at our engineering committee meeting today that occurred just prior to the meeting, and uh, just this, this uh, board meeting, and I uh, just wanted to put that on the record as well. Uh, resolution number five is a change order number six to the contract for the maintenance of our sludge processors. Uh, this is a contract that, um, that is now completed. The sludge processors are the actual dryers and it involves uh, all the work associated with the uh, annual shutdowns associated with uh, those units and, and maintaining them. Um, and the, uh, the original contract was a two-year contract um, uh, in the amount of $1,765,270 dollars. This contract uh, ended in March of, uh, in, in May of 2017, and the final price uh, of work completed during the two-year period was $1,301,892.28. Um, we're, we're, we're actually processing this change order for credit in the amount of $463,382.72 as a result of the final cost associated with, uh, you know, with this particular work. Uh, a new contract has been awarded, um, over, was awarded over the summer, and we, um, we are currently, that contract is currently in place right now for continuation of uh, another two, two year period for the maintenance of the uh, sludge processors or dryers. Um, resolution number six is a change order to the dewatering building order control system rehabilitation contract. 
uh, with Northeast uh, Remsco Construction Incorporated. Um, the, uh, this change order involves uh, repairs to a concrete pad to one of the scrubber units with the odor control system scrubber units um, at, you know, at the, uh, the water and building. Um, there was some concrete work that had to be performed uh, on the pad to, uh, uh, to protect it from uh, corrosion and do some repairs and perform some repairs and it's for an amount not to exceed $11,000. Uh, this item was also discussed during the engineering committee meeting which uh, just occurred uh, prior to this board meeting. Resolution number seven is resolution authorizing a competitive contract to uh, furnish and install and maintain scale software at the Middlesex County landfill. Uh, the MCUA uh, elected to proceed with a competitive contracting process. Uh, this was approved by resolution back in October of last year to, to follow through with um, uh, you know, this procedure. And what the competitive contracting allows is a, uh, a five-year, the MCUA to enter into a five-year contract and allow the, uh, uh, the award of the contract to be based upon uh, price as well as other factors that are identified in the RFP uh, on a weighted basis. Um, as, it, as it turns out, we, uh, we did advertise four proposals uh, in uh, July 7th of uh, 2017. We received two proposals, one from MCS Group and the other from Paradigm Software LLC. Um, and um, the work basically involves uh, updating the software for the, uh, uh, for the system that, that monitors all the waste coming into the landfill at our, through our scale facilities, as well as all the record keeping for all of the waste by various waste types and, and tonnages for all the different haulers that come into the facility, as well as uh, our, our billing system that prepares invoices and um, uh, you know, for receiving the, uh, the, the revenues from the haulers for the waste that they actually tipped in the landfill each day. Um, so the two proposals that we received, one, um, you, you know, one was uh, in the amount of 128,750, which was AM, uh, AMGS um, a group, AMCS group. I'm sorry, AMCS group, and the other was Paradigm for 292,394.43, uh, based upon price as well as other factors. We're looking to award the contract to AMCS group for the 128,750. Um, and once again, this will be a five-year contract. Is this a totally new system, or is it? Uh, this is basically just the software. The authority is the one that purchases all the hardware for the um, for this work. This is, uh, you know, new software as well as maintenance for uh, for a period of five years. So it's like a higher quality. Though. Yes, okay. um, it's a it's a window-based software system as opposed to. Um, what was called the uh, graphic user interface system, which was uh, 30 years uh, in place at the uh, at the landfill, and we felt it was time to do an upgrade. And uh, this was the system that was ultimately selected. Rich, is that the price for all five years, or is that that's the five? That's the all five years, right? The the the, the annual maintenance is about eighteen thousand dollars a year for this uh, for the software. Uh, it's significantly oh, less than the than the other bidder. Pardon? And plus, it's and plus it's significantly less. That's yeah. correct. Um, resolution number eight is authorization of a time extension. Uh, no, authorization of extending the contract term for our uh, contract for furnishing off-road tires and uh, for various heavy equipment at the landfill with FS Tire Corporation Incorporated. This is year two of a two-year contract, and we're looking to award, uh, continue the contract for an amount not to exceed $42,444. And then lastly, um, resolution number nine is a resolution uh, for, a, a which is amendment number three for our reclaimed soil supply agreements between uh, soil service companies and the MCUA. These are the companies that uh, provide MCUA with uh, reclaimed soils from construction sites and um, um, other cleanup sites. It's non-hazardous uh, soil that's uh, that's approved, and these contracts are actually paying the MCUA $23 a ton for material uh, at, at you know for us to accept this material at the landfill, which is suitable for for cover soils, and it's 
and rev generating revenue for the MCUA for, for three years. And it, the reason for the time extension, which is extending the contract from August uh, to the end, of, um, the end of August through the end of October, is we're in the midst of procuring new contracts. These are three-year contracts. Those contracts are now up. And we're looking to, uh, we're in the procurement process of, uh, of uh, you know, getting new contracts for another three-year period. And that process is going to require uh, a little bit more time to complete because of additional information that was required during the qualification process of that procurement process. So um, that's the reason for the time so extension. This only covers it for two months, then, basically. That's correct. This is another two months. And that concludes the agenda. Okay. Are there any questions on the agenda from the commissioners that are here? All right. Well, we... <coughs> We did uh, formally open the meeting, so we don't have to go back and do that. Normally, we would discuss it in the agenda session, but we did not do that this time. So we're now and still in the regular meeting. Uh, and the first order of business is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of July 27, 2017. It was the approval of the minutes of July 27, 2017. We have a motion to approve and second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Abstain. For the record. Okay, would you mark that abstention then? And the minutes have been accepted and approved. Now, we'll open the meeting for public hearing on the resolutions that we have before us, resolutions one through nine. We will have a public hearing in general at the end of the, after we discuss public the public session, but for this opening of the public hearing now, pertains to any of the nine resolutions that we have before us for action today. Is there any member of the public that wishes to make comments or questions on those resolutions? We're seeing none, we'll close that public portion. And may we have an adoption, we, we don't have to do it for A1, because we did that, right? Sorry. Okay. I think we should move items two through nine. No, we should do number one. We didn't. Oh, we didn't officially vote. It. We didn't officially vote on it. We don't have to do it separately, though. We can right. I guess you can just it. close the public meeting. We can do okay. resolutions one through nine. Okay. I'll ask for a motion then to approve resolutions one through nine uh, that are on the agenda session. On the, uh, the session, uh, not only agenda session, but a regular meeting session. And we have a motion to approve those resolutions. So moved. Move by Commissioner Riley. Can we have a second? Second. Uh, any comments? The Secretary, please pull the roll. Chairman Light? Yes. Vice Chairman Wiley? Yes. Commissioner Scarberry? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Steele? Yes. Jacobs? Yes. Giuliano? Yes. Murray? Aye. 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 Before we open it to the public, I make note that uh, we did have the engineering committee meeting as was mentioned before and was chair of the engineering committee did you have any comments that you wanted to make Ray? Uh, well you, Richard made note of the fact that we discussed uh, the two resolutions that were on for tonight um, in addition uh, we, we talked about the progress of both uh, the Edison and Sarah Road pump station the FEMA mitigation which seems to be going on quite nicely. Okay. Any questions on that? All right, uh, we do have, if the commissioner should have received a copy of the payment of bills, is the payment of the wastewater division and also the solid waste division. Accept those. I don't know, I'll that. I just want to give them that they don't know for that later. All right, let's open the meeting to the public for any comments or questions that the public may have. Do we have any comments, questions? Paul, well, say something so we don't say. <laughs> <laughs> They're seeing none will close the public portion. The date of our next meeting is September the 28th. And unless any commissioner has any comments or questions that they have, does anybody have anything to bring up? Or Leslie, do you have anything? Yeah. Rich? No. Seeing no other business that's come before us, maybe we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. So, whether we have the motion, second. we can go move, <laughs> move, 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 second. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, we are adjourned, thank you. Thank you.